one of the retorts and or arguments you'll hear from people very frequently is that whatever little difference there might be between men and women, they're actually really similar. You hear this constantly. There's a lot of overlap between men and women. In fact, much more overlap than there is difference. And this is done, of course, to downplay the differences and to, as usual, as is customary, especially in the mainstream, but also in mainstream adjacent circles, to remind us how men and women are actually not too far off from each other. They're pretty much the same thing, some small differences. The thing they always forget to mention, and it's very irritating, it's one of those things that irritates me no end, is that the differences, however small they might be, are so significant in the divisions they create that they might as well be huge in terms of the consequences. So people will say, well, men and women both like the same things. That's not, of course, true, but let's say it were true. In fact, let's think of a hypothetical scenario here. This idea that men and women have the same interests, let's just say that's true. You have a man and a woman, and they have exactly the same interest in films, exactly the same interest in board games, exactly the same interest in video games, exactly the same interest in books, all this stuff, and they're hanging out. There's one difference, one very important difference, that can basically nullify all those common interests right there. Because the fact of the matter is, men have motile gametes and women have immotile gametes, you know, ova versus sperm. And theoretically, very theoretically, anytime you have a man and a woman in the same room, the potential consequence of that, potentially, is reproduction, which is to say every man can inseminate a woman and every woman can carry and give birth to a child. And this seemingly small difference leads to all kinds of conflict in the arena of life and the arena of society. It's not just, oh, there's a lot of overlap. There's so many similarities between men and women. It's all the same. Even if it were almost all the same, that key difference is huge because You have to think about where these differences come from. The difference between male and female goes back at least tens of millions of years, actually a lot further, if you think about it. And so it's not just ancient, but primordial. And the consequence of this is, for example, me too. So let's say you did have some dude in the same room as a female, lots of common interests, lots of things they could potentially share with each other. But if that dude happens not to, how should we put it, please the female sense of aesthetics, I, he's not attractive, he will be labeled a creep. He doesn't even need to do anything that's quote-unquote creepy. He just needs to exist. Or maybe he's awkward. Whatever those common interests are, they will be nullified. Overlap and interest is ultimately insignificant in the face of evolved differences when it comes to reproduction. It's why a lot of women are afraid of men because they fear the consequences of getting impregnated with their own DNA. It's why most men are labeled creeps by women, because their mannerisms, their awkwardness, and their aesthetics, i.e. their appearance, does not appeal to them. And it leads to completely different behavioral modules. So, whilst I understand in theory, in the mainstream, people trying to save this idea of, well, there's actually so much overlap between men and women, it doesn't really matter. Because even when there's overlap, the overlap still leads to profoundly different outcomes. I, the hypothetical example I gave of a man and a woman in the same room having all the same interests, but he happens to be a quote-unquote creep or uninteresting or whatever, and so she would not want to associate with him. Hell, she might even be afraid of him because women are fearful of strange men because of evolved differences. And what's even more interesting is for a man... When a woman seemingly has similar or common interests, that's usually enough, provided she isn't a 3,000-pound troglodytic monstrosity. As long as she's average-looking and she has common interests, a lot of guys will be interested in her, precisely because usually women don't have the same interests as men. So men get all giddy and happy when they see a female has the same interests as them. But what did I just mention? If the guy is not okay in looks department or is otherwise awkward, that doesn't matter. He's just a creep. And I get why the mainstream tries to do that, but they're engaging in a lot of doublespeak. 
they're okay with completely eliminating male spaces. Boy Scouts has not existed for quite some time. There's no such thing as a male gym, at least officially. But at the same time, they insist on having female-only gyms. The Girl Scouts needs to remain the Girl Scouts rather than unisex. And so this double-speak contradiction perpetuates itself and doesn't make any sense. And the funniest thing here is that to the average person, this is all common sense. You just need to look out at the world, see how men and women behave, and it's just very, very, very different in their interactions and how they perceive things. And that key difference, you know, between reproduction, the one that is a deal breaker, makes all the overlap totally irrelevant. Because even the cases when she's kind of a neutral towards the guy, there's always that potential because of the possibility of pregnancy and reproduction and mating and dating that someone's going to catch feelings, usually the guy. In which case, who cares if there's overlap? Now, the actual truth is there's not a whole lot of overlap between men and women. Men and women like very different things on average. I was stating otherwise for the sake of the discussion, but it's clear men and women have very different interests. Even when they like the same games, you look at certain types of games, and then you'll see that the women play them as romance sims, and the guys play them, well, as games. Or the type of films people like. Well, people including both men and women. I've never met a heterosexual man in my life who liked the type of cheesy romance flick that women like. So actually, there's not a lot of overlap between women and men. There's some, but it's not that much. And there's a huge number of things that are fundamentally different and make it very, very difficult to get along. You know my belief that ultimately women don't really like men, at least on average. That's part of it. So you have two separate beings. One of them just doesn't think very highly of you, might be afraid of you, certainly has no interest in you, but you both happen to like the same novels and the same music. But who cares in that case? Because he's still going to want to have as little to do with you as possible, and you're going to be a chump. The contradiction and hypocrisy is also pretty obvious in the concept of women's rights. Women's rights being separate, exclusive, and different from the rights of men, or so they would claim. Why would you need that if men and women were basically the same, or there were a lot of overlap? And it's funny that when I go through my daily life and interact with normies, I am astonished that people never really think about it too much. I mean, they probably are aware of these things when they encounter it, but they do their best to suppress it. But it's just so obvious. Whatever overlap there is, it's minimal. There isn't a lot of overlap between men and women. Not really. Forget about interest. That single dividing line creates more division than any common interest ever could. And the fact of the matter is things like Me Too, the online dating scene, and the politics of our day are a testament to that. It's just rank hypocrisy on the part of these people. Men and women are very, very different. And God forbid you suggest that you might want to have male-only spaces. The only way we could get back to a world where we acknowledge these differences openly and it were a given would be some kind of mass re-education. And we are not politically or culturally primed for that, quite the opposite. So we're going to persist in this delusion, create a lot of harm going forward, and more and more destruction. I don't think something like Me Too was one of a kind. There'll be similar things in the future. And most of it's going to be really unpleasant for men who allegedly have all this overlap with women. Men and women associate with each other when they want to for the purposes of reproduction and passing on their DNA. That is the purpose of interacting between men and women. Yes, there are other arrangements. Sure, you have familiar relations, also related to DNA. You have other things. But by and large, everything men and women do these days is quite novel when it doesn't revolve around reproduction. And we're just not honest about that. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons. You guys are the best. You keep the channel going. Special thanks to my PayPal donors as well. You guys are equally vital. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. I'm coming off a severe pestilence at the moment, so hopefully I recover. Until then, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye for now.
If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.